Okay, we're back, and we're about ready to start the seventh and final turn of our playthrough of the first introductory scenario of combat uh, from Compass Games. Before we continue on and finish the, the game with turn number seven, just a couple of very quick notes about turn number six. Uh, a couple of things uh, were forgotten to do. Uh, and they both happened right at the very end in the in the last up, even after the actions phase. The first, you'll recall Private Goldstein had a reload order, and he kept that order throughout the entire turn. And if that's the case, in step five there, you are to remove the out-of-ammo marker. And I forgot to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Private Goldstein is okay to go ahead and fire. The other had to do with the grenade that had been in this hex here. Uh, I did the grenade check and he escaped anything, but you also need to do a morale check in any adjacent hex, and we did so for this, but you also do a morale check for the hex where the grenade exploded, and I forgot to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do a morale check with a minus three to his troop quality from wounds and uh, morale and he starts out with a troop quality of four with a minus three uh, things don't look good for him there because any deck well actually he's probably going to be okay because anything below his current morale shaken is route well with route in, in, in addition this character here is routed your, your morale actually goes up. Where I, more appropriately, you lose the modifier from the shaken morale. So let's go ahead and do a morale check. He needs a one or less to uh, succeed. It's a six. He fails. And when you fail a morale check, uh, your, your morale goes down one level. Well, his current level is cautious. Down one, or I'm sorry, shaken. Down one level from cautious is route. Whoops, sorry, they're trying to get that for you. Well, it's route, take my word for it. And so his shaken morale goes away and is replaced by route. So now the enemy characters have two routed characters, another character who's wounded, and then two other characters who are uh, undamaged at this point. All right, we're caught up. We're ready to go forward. Let's go ahead and complete this game with turn number seven. Uh, the first step, which is the friendly card phase, if you don't have any cards, and we don't, go ahead and draw a card. Here's the card we draw. It's card number 16. This will be the card that we are going to use for initiative here in just a few minutes. The second step is, is if we had any cards left over from planning last turn, we'd add them at this time. We don't. Continuing on, we don't have an excess of five cards, so we're going to have to go ahead and play this card for the initiative. Now, a couple of things. The initiative values are Charlie Team with eight. Baker's going to be 54, but it's also an order card. And remember, when you play an order card for initiative, you have to do what the orders say. But once again, it's an event. And then this scenario, events are ignored, so it's just the initiative values. We now move on to the next step, which is the friendly order phase, where we deal with the orders that we want to give uh, our troopers. All right, so in the upper area here, with Private Walsh, I'm going to give him the same order as before, evade. Uh, I would give him a sprint, doesn't matter. I'm going to give him an evade because I want him to move into this hex to get the extra victory points. Corporal Thomas up above, him I am going to give a sprint order to because I want him to get to that other victory point hex and he's going to need a little more uh, moving to get there. Private Stubbs right here with bold morale and low ammo. I'm going to again just give him an order phase uh, to shoot into uh, pretty much just about everybody. But last time I gave him aimed fire, in which case he could only shoot at two 
soldiers. This turn I'm going to give him, or two impulses. This turn I'm giving him rapid fire, where he'll be able to fire every impulse, albeit with a minus two modifier. So that's the end of Charlie Company's, or Charlie Team's orders. We now go to Baker Team, and let's take a look. Well, first things first, with Private Goldstein, now that he has ammo, and he's well uh, uh, protected in the rocks, I'm also going to give him rapid fire. As for Private Johnson, he's got shaken morale, which is pretty bad, and so I don't want to give him any more modifiers to his weapon skill, so I'll give him aimed fire. Granted, he's only going to be able to shoot in impulses 2 and 4, but at least it won't be with any other uh, modifiers. Which leaves us with Private Miller. Now, he's wounded. He has bold morale. He's currently sitting in the logs, and he's fairly close to everybody. I'm actually going to give him aimed fire as well. These routed characters are not going to stick around long. And so those other characters, he may just as well use his aimed fire to go ahead and shoot at them. So that's the end of the friendly orders phase. We now move on to step three, which is the enemy card and orders phase. We've got five enemy characters remaining. They will each get a card drawn for... Actually, they won't each get a card drawn for them. Those... Uh, well, hold on here just a minute. Let me just make sure that those routed characters do not get an enemy card drawn. Well, actually they will, I believe, and we'll talk about well and, and we'll talk about why here in a second. We'll do the other three characters first. So we'll start with the blue, and we'll start with this blue here. He's uh, normal morale. He's in cover in the rocks. And so we take a look in cover, normal morale, aimed fire, G. He's most certainly within four hexes of a spotted friendly character. And so he may be uh, given a grenade order. And also, by the way, since this is the first blue, he'll get a 71 initiative there. But before we can give that grenade order, we first must pass a troop quality check. Uh, he has no modifiers. His troop quality is 5, so a 5 or less is needed to change the order. It's a 4, and so he will receive a grenade order. And just like what we did last turn with Private Johnson, the, the process here is going to be very similar, and so I will give him a grenade order. We'll go next with the other blue character who has the light wound, and low ammo and cautious. Uh, I believe he's in the open, and he is. So he's in the open with cautious, so he gets aimed fire. And so we'll give him an aimed fire order. All right, that brings us to the red team, and I'm gonna start with the unrouted red character over here in cover. He's got normal morale in cover, he gets a hide order. And since it's the last red, or the first red, his initiative is going to be one with a hide order. And that brings us to the last two red characters who both have route as their morale. Now, one character, this one, is lightly wounded. This character is not wounded, but has out of ammo. When a character has route morale... Uh, for enemy characters, if he has a line of sight to a spotted friendly character, and in this case they both do, then this enemy character will move in the direction specified under the route line of the enemy order, and they're both red, and I'll show you this here. We haven't looked at this yet. On the card at the very bottom, you'll see there's a route order. So they'll both move in directions two, three. And they will do so using the fastest possible order, uh, movement order. Sprint, run and gun, evade, and sneak. Now, this character here has no other restrictions. He's not wounded. 
And so he's going to move with the fastest possible movement order, which is sprint. And so let me find a sprint marker. Here we go. Uh, and it was 2-3 was the order. And so I'm just going to uh, issue him a sprint 2-3 marker. That means he's going to run as fast as he can in the opposite direction. The other character has a light wound. And if you'll recall, we talked about this earlier. If a character is wounded, his movement is restricted in certain instances. A light wound cannot sprint. And so therefore, he must be given the next fastest out of that list. And that was run and gun. And so he's going to get a run and gun 2-3 order. So let me see if I can find that. not looked for one exactly of that number before, but so let's just take a look. Oh, here we go, right here. Run and gun, 2-3. Because remember, on the orders card, 2-3 was the direction. So he's going to run, but he might also have an opportunity to fire. All right, that's the end of the red team orders phase, and that's the end of turn three, more or less. The only thing we have left to do, and again, I'll move the camera down so we can take a look, is set our initiative order. So for this final turn, the initiative values are going to be red team with one. Then we're going to go to, oh, put this in the wrong spot. Uh, Charlie team with eight. Then we have Baker team with 54. And finally, we have blue team with 71. So in every impulse this turn, it'll be red team, Charlie team, Baker team, blue team. And again, this is it. This is the last turn. All right, we're now ready to get going with step four, which is the action phase. And so let's get going. Uh, red team is up first. We have three red characters. And they're all on the same level. And so we go with the one who's closest to an enemy character, and that's here. And he has a sprint 2-3 order. And it's one hex here in the first impulse. And that's moving in this direction. Sprint is straight, a 2 is straight up. And so that's the end for that character. We then come down to this character here who has run and gun. And then directions 2-3. In the first impulse, it's a movement of 1. So he also will move straight up 1. And that's into the rocks. Then finally, we have this character here who is hiding. So that's the end of red team. We now go to Charlie team. We're going to start up here with Private Walsh. He's got an evade one. And he moves into this uh, hex with the victory points marker. Remember, that's in the game setup or the scenario setup. It said he gets, uh, or I get plus four victory points if I get into that area. And then he's going to stop. He can only move one hex. Uh, now, he did move into a hedge, which is rough terrain, but since he doesn't have a sprint order, he doesn't have to change that to uh, duck back. Corporal Thomas up here uh, has a sprint order, and I'm going to move him one into the road. His goal is to get up here by the end of the turn. Then we're going to use uh, the rapid fire here of Private Stubbs. Now, he can see... Well, you know, he can't see him because of the rocks. He can't see him because of the hedge. Can't see him because of the trees. Uh, can't see him because he's hiding in the tall grass. His only choice is to shoot at this blue character right here. And so that's what he's going to do. He's using an M1. The range is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On a range of 8 with an M1, that is an unmodified range. The character has aimed fire in the open for his orders. That is a modifier of zero. And then Private Stubbs has minus two on his uh, order. So that's a minus two weapon skill modifier. No other markers on him give any other modifiers. So that's a minus two modifier on a weapon skill of five, meaning he needs a three or less to hit. We'll roll, and it comes up five, so he misses. That's the end of Charlie team. We now move on to Baker team. 
Uh, Private Johnson has aimed fire, and it's zero in the first impulse, so he does nothing. Same thing up here for Private Miller. He has zero. But we have Private Goldstein, who has rapid fire. Now, Private Goldstein can see both of these characters, cannot see either of these two, and again, because of the hiding in the tall grass, can't see there. So he's got either of these two, and I'm going to choose again to shoot at the same uh, character that Private Stubbs did. However, for Private Goldstein, that's a range of three using the bar. So that's a plus one range modifier. Uh, the defensive order and terrain is a zero modifier. And he's got rapid fire, so that's a minus two modifier. So uh, he's currently sitting at minus one and no other modifiers on a weapon skill of four, meaning he also needs a three or less to hit. But because it's a bar, he has uh, the ability, if I choose to do so, to shoot twice, and I am going to do so. First roll is a two. That's a hit. So let's go ahead and work that out. It's a light wound. All right. First step under a light wound again is to add a light wound marker to the character. And that's his second light wound. And that could be significant here. His troop quality is five, and he's got two light wounds, which is minus two, and a cautious, which is another minus one. So he's got minus three modifiers right now to his troop quality. Additionally, which leaves him with a troop quality of two, we change his order, which was aimed fire, and honestly, this was the whole point here, from aimed fire to duck back. So we'll go ahead and make that duck back. And then he's got a wound morale check with a minus two. Was it minus two or minus three modifier? Minus three modifiers. So he's got a two or less to pass. And it's a six, so he does not pass. And what that means is, is his morale goes down two points which also takes him into route. Uh, the good news is for this character is that that also gives back the one point of the morale that the cautious was given him. Now he has route. In effect, it's not going to do anything this turn because he keeps his current order until the start of the next turn and there will be no next turn. All right, so uh, we have one more shot, and I have to use it because A, it could be a hit and do more damage, and B, it could have ammo consequences. He rolls, it's a one, so it's another hit. Draw another wound card, it's a close call, and in close calls, all we do is a morale check, and he's at minus two on his morale now, just from the wounds, so he's at three. We roll and get a six, and he loses that, the consequence is his morale goes down one level, but it can't go down any more than what it already is. So he's good to go. That's the end of Baker team. We now move to blue team. We have two uh, characters. First is, well, we'll do this character here. We change his uh, duck back order to a hide order. And Hyde has zero, so nothing happens. But this character here has grenade. And the grenade scenario for enemy characters is very similar to the grenade scenario of friendly characters. On impulse one, the grenade is armed, and you place a grenade marker uh, on the character's hex. Here's what the German grenade marker looks like. So we'll give him a grenade. And we need to t uh, place a grenade target marker on the closest friendly character within four hexes. In the rules it says three, but that's uh, an errata. It should be four. And so I'll go ahead and place the grenade hex on the closest character well, there's three of them. They're all three hexes away. 
and it's random choice if there's more than one. So we're just going to go a 1, 2, a 3, 4, and a 5, 6. And it comes out to a 1, which means it's going to go over here on Private Miller. That's the target hex right now. All right, that's the end of Impulse 1 for that particular character. That's the end of Impulse 1 for the blue team. And that's the end of Impulse 1 altogether. So let's go ahead and move on to Impulse 2. And we start again with the red team. We'll start here. He's got a sprint 2 in the 3 direction. And 3 is in this direction, so he gets to move 2. And again, he's not moving into rough terrain, so he doesn't have to change his order. And so he moves further away uh, to safety. Next, we have this soldier here who has run and gun as his order. And in Impulse 2, that's a fire order. He can see both of these characters. So which one's easier to hit? That's the first uh, tiebreaker. We've got Private Goldstein, who's rapid fire in rocks. That's a minus two modifier. And we have Private Johnson, who is aimed fire in the house or building. That's also minus two. They're also the exact same distance. And so therefore, it then becomes random. And again, I'll give a 1, 2, 3 to Bernstein, 4, 5, 6 to Johnson, and it comes up 5. So he'll be firing at Private Johnson. Uh, just checking again real quick for his weapon. His weapon is the CAR 98K. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's a distance of 5, so there's no range modifier. We just determined that the defensive order and terrain modifier is minus 2. Let's check the soldier for any other modifiers. Well, run and gun is minus two more, so that's minus four. He's also routed, which means he can't fire at all. And again, I'll show this to you. You look at that minus A in the white circle, red letters. That's a, a, a change to uh, weapon skill, <coughs> which means he has no weapon skill this turn which means he does not fire, which means he moves. And he moves in direction three, and that's again in this direction. So that's the end of his impulse. This soldier here has a hide impulse, which means he does nothing. We now go to Charlie Company. He's got an evade order. I'm actually going to move him down closer to the action. Not that it matters much. Corporal uh, Thomas, I'm going to move him two hexes right up the road. He'll be able to get that victory point hex next turn. And finally, we've got Private Stubbs, who will take another shot at this character right here. It's the only character he can see. And that's on an M1 with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 range, no modifier. He's got minus 2 uh, for his own order. We've got hide in the open for the target order and terrain. And hide in the open is a minus two. Rapid fire is minus two, so that's minus four with a weapon skill of five, so he needs a one or less to get a hit. And he gets a five, so he misses. That's the end of the second impulse for Charlie team. We now go to the second impulse for Baker team. I'm going to start here with Private Johnson. He can see... The grenade thrower, he can see the hiding soldier here. He's gonna. Sh I think he can see the grenade thrower, and if he can, that's definitely who I'm shooting at. So let's take a look here. Again, measuring line of sight. And yeah, it avoids the rocks. None of the orders uh, would cause the logs to come into play. And so Private Johnson is going to fire at the blue soldier that is getting ready to throw a grenade. That's a distance of four, which means there's no, and he's using a, an M1, so there's no range modifier there. The defense, or the, the blue character is using a grenade order in the rocks, and that gives a minus two modifier. And he's got another minus two modifier for his morale, which is shaken, so that's minus four on a weapons skill of five which means Private Johnson needs a one or less. 
and it's a three, so he misses. That brings up Private Goldstein. Say, uh, he cannot see the grenade thrower because of these rocks right here, and so he's going to shoot again at this character here. It's a distance of three with a plus one modifier. He's got a minus two for his own order, so that's a minus one total on the modifiers, and then hide in the open is another minus two. So that's a total of minus four modifiers. On a weapon skill of four, he needs exactly a zero, and again, he gets two shots. First shot is a two, which is a miss. Second shot is a five, which is another miss. Third, we have uh, Private Miller right here. He can absolutely see both of those soldiers, both the grenade thrower and the one hiding, and he's going to shoot at the grenade thrower. Again, what I'm trying to do is, is to get a hit on him so his... He doesn't get a chance to throw his grenade. Um, Private Miller is using an M1. It's a distance of two, and that is a plus one range modifier. The defensive terrain order bonus is grenade in the rock, so that's minus two. So that's a total. And, and by the way, his order here is aimed fire, so that's a minus one total modifier. There's also another minus one because of the light wound, so that's minus two on a weapon skill of four, so he needs a two or a less. And the roll is, believe it or not, a one, so we get a hit. So let's take a check and see what happens here. A light wound, a bad wound, or a KIA is good. Uh, morale check doesn't help us. And it's a light wound. All right, again, we've done this several times, so we kind of know the drill here. The first thing you do with a light wound is you give him a light wound marker, which we're going to do. And this is his first wound. So we put the light wound marker. But the second, and this is the key point right here, is that you change his order from whatever it was, grenade, to duck back. And the reason why this is really significant is this grenade that he activated in round in impulse one is still live, and it's going to stay right in that hex. Meaning, this guy is actually going to take a grenade hit. The third thing we do is a wound morale check. He's got a minus one to his morale because of the wound, uh, or a minus one troop quality. Starts out with a troop quality of five, minus one is four. So let's go ahead and roll for that. Comes up as an 8. An 8 on a wound morale check is minus 2. He's currently at normal morale. So that takes him down to shaken, which is a minus 2 further modifier to his troop quality. His troop quality is now down to minus 3. But again, he's got a duck back order and a grenade marker. Um... And so that doesn't look good for him. Uh, and, and just as an FYI, this is in the notes section of the rules is what I'm talking about with this grenade. If the enemy character is forced to duck back before throwing the grenade on impulse 3 and the grenade is live, place a grenade near marker, which I'll have to go ahead and do, on the character and a grenade far marker on all other characters in the hex. He dropped the grenade at his feet, is basically what it's saying. And so I'll give him a grenade near marker, and at the end of the turn, we'll have to roll for that attack with grenade near against him. So that's the end of Baker team. We now go to blue team. There's only the two characters. The one has got duck back. It immediately changes the hide. So it's a zero for impulse two. The other one's already at zero for Impulse 2. That's the end of Impulse 2. We move on to Impulse 3. We start with Red Team. And we'll start here. He's got a sprint. And he moves two hexes in direction 2. So he moves up to here. This guy here has run and gun in direction 2. So he moves into the trees. This guy here has hide, so he does nothing. That's the end of the red team in Impulse 3. Charlie team in Impulse 3. We'll move him here. 
He's got to move two hexes. He's going to move one and stop. And, gra and a couple things happen. Number one, he grabs a victory point. But number two, he moves into a hex with rough character, uh, terrain. And since he has a sprint order, we change that sprint order to duck back. And so he's going to be staying there for the rest of this turn, which is fine. I get the extra victory points from this marker. The next uh, is Private Stubbs, who has rapid fire. Can't see here. Can't see here. Can't see here. Can't see here. Can see here. So, another uh, another fire attack against him. Again, you'll recall there's no modifier for distance. He's hide in the open and a rapid fire minus two penalty. Hiding in the open is minus two. Rapid fire is minus two. So that's minus four for modifiers in a skill of five. So he needs a one or a less. He shoots, gets a five, he misses. That's the end of Charlie team. We now go to Baker team. We've got aimed fire, which is zero. Aimed fire, which is zero. And oh, by the way, I can also remove this target marker because the grenade is dropped. So those guys do nothing. He's got rapid fire. Uh, the only character he can see is here. And so he's going to fire there, but I'm only going to fire one round this impulse. Uh, it's a minus two modifier for enemy order and terrain. He's got another minus two for rapid fire. That's minus four total on a weapon skill of four. He needs a zero. And again, I'm only firing once. He gets a seven, so that's a miss. That's the end of Baker team. We now go to blue team. We've got a hide order so nothing happens. We've got a hide order, so nothing happens. We're getting very close to the end here. We're going to impulse four, which is our final impulse of the final turn. We start out with red team. We start out here. He has a sprint order, which carries a two hex movement in direction three. So he moves one hex here, but because it's a sprint order into a rough hex, he changes from sprint to duck back. And so he's done. And we have run and gun in the three direction. So he moves here. He stays where he is. That's it. That's the end of red team. Uh, Charlie team, he's got a duck back, so it just changes to hide. He's got an evade. He moves up one. He's got a fire over here. Again, that's a minus two modifier for the target order in terrain. A minus two modifier for the friendly order. That's minus four in the modifiers on a weapon skill of five. The roll is five, so it's a miss. That's the end of ba or Charlie team. Baker team, we've got aimed fire, rapid fire, aimed fire. And he's going to shoot here. It's a distance of two with a plus one modifier because of rain, uh, for range. The character has a hide order in the rocks. Hide order in the rocks is a minus five modifier. Plus any hit is nothing more than a morale check. Uh, so we're at minus three total modifiers right now. Plus a light wound. Is minus four in modifiers on a weapon skill of four. He needs exactly a zero. The roll is a five, so that's a miss. We go to Private Bernstein, and he's uh, shooting at the routed hide character. It's a distance of three, which is a plus one modifier. Hide in the open is a minus two modifier, so we're at minus one. And rapid fire is a, itself a minus three. So he need, and I don't know if he's got any other modifiers. No, so it's a minus three modifier. He needs a one or less, and I'm only firing one. Comes up a six, so he misses. Last and not least for Baker team, Private Johnson. He's going to shoot at the same character. 
It's a distance of one, two, three, so it's a plus one modifier. Um, minus two modifier for the order, hide in the open. No uh, order modifiers for him, but he's shaken, so that's minus two. So that's a minus three modifier on a five skill. He rolls and gets a three, so that's a miss. That's the end of Baker team. All we have left is blue team, and they both have hide orders, so they don't move. That's the end of impulse four here in turn seven. So we now go back and do the end of turn sequence, the end phase sequence. And remember, the first thing that you do in this instance is the grenade firing. And I'll show you the card again. This is actually the German grenade that's going to go off. The damage is 3-1, the frag is 3-2, so it's slightly different than the, the friendly grenade, and then the smoke is 1. So it's a grenade near, because remember it was a dropped grenade, so we get 3 attacks with a, a 2 hit of 3 or less. So the first attack is a 4, that's a miss. Second attack is a 6, that's also a miss. And the third attack is a 3. And that's a hit. So we have a hit on the dropped grenade. Take a look at the hit. It's a light wound. So he's getting another light wound marker. He already had one. <clears throat> so we'll get rid of the grenade near marker. So that's his second light wound hit. He also has a shaken morale. So that's minus four to his morale or his troop quality. The order gets automatically changed to duck back, which again doesn't matter. And he needs to take a wound morale check, followed by a morale check. Um, oh, you know what? That also should have been modified as a minus two because of order and terrain. And that being that, that uh, light wound would not have happened. So give me that second light wound back. We'll give him back his duck back. And so I, I apologize. The grenade should have had uh, modified by the terrain in order. And I forgot to do that, but we caught it. Lastly, it takes a morale check. And his morale right now is two. On troop quality, it rolls as a zero. So when you roll a zero on a morale check, your morale actually in increases by one level. And so he goes from shaken to cautious, even after the, the grenade. Then we remove the grenade marker and we add a smoke marker. Additionally, we have another smoke marker on the board and there are no more smoke markers to add for that particular instance. And so therefore the uh, smoke marker changes to thinning smoke or uh, uh, fading smoke actually. And then the next turn, if there was a next turn, we'd actually remove that fading smoke entirely. There's no planning orders. We did the smoke counters. It's not uh, waiting character, so let's remove all orders. Again, not that it matters, especially in this instance, because this was the last turn of the game. All right, so that's all the orders. Then, uh, move the impulse marker to one. Then, in the Sequence of play that says if this is the end of uh, the last turn, then check victory conditions into the game. And so that's where we're at. We're going to check our victory conditions. And if you'll recall from way back in the setup, these are all of our victory conditions. So let's check them out. The first one says each enemy that's not an NCO we had that was killed. We killed one, two, three, four, five, six. None of them are NCOs. They're all regular soldiers, so that's plus six victory points. 
The next victory condition says each NCO enemy killed. Well, there weren't any. So we're still at plus six. Each enemy non-NCO prisoner. We didn't take any prisoners. That would have been three victory points. Each NCO prisoner. We didn't take any. Each enemy that routes off the map. Didn't happen. We came close up there. And if we had another turn, perhaps it would have happened. But it didn't. And then it says, for each of the following hexes that a friendly character passed through, and it lists them, and we found three. Each one of those is plus four victory points. So that's 12 victory points for the hexes, plus six more for the uh, enemy KIAs. So that's 18 positives. Now we go through the negatives. Each friendly character killed. We didn't have any. Each friendly character alive, but wounded. And we've got one, two that are wounded. The other four are not. So that's minus two points. So that brings us back to 16. And then each enemy character that exit or friendly character that exits off the map, uh, that didn't happen. Or each enemy character, uh, I, I'm sorry, that exits off the map at the bottom. That didn't happen. So we are left with a total of 16 victory points. And so we check our level, 15 plus, which is us. Superb victory, commendations placed in 201 file. Woohoo! We won with a, uh, a superb victory. All right. That's the end of this scenario. And basically, this is going to be the end of our playthrough. I hope you found it informative. I hope you liked uh, following along. Uh, again, this is a total of eight videos from setup through turn seven. Uh, I'm always available on Board Game Geek as TP Holt. Uh, I also I'm on the Solitaire War Games forum and the Combat uh, pages on on Facebook, but I'm not as as active there. If you have any questions, any comments. Anything at all, feel free to leave them here in the comments or message me directly on, on Board Game Geek. So, for now, signing off. Uh, have fun gaming.